a few preview photos of what I'll be making in this video. Hope you enjoy the video. Starting a new project today. It's a waterfall edge bench for behind a sofa. And on a normal waterfall edge, the grain would flow across and go down the edge and it'll be a 45 degree cut so the grain continues so when you get these sort of lines it should follow straight down the edge that's going to be a little bit harder for me because I've picked up three separate boards and the grains don't line up but I'll do as good as I can for it uh, they're, they're nice boards 240 wide and four, 45 deep so they're, they're a nice chunky board for doing this it should, should look really good the only thing I've done to it so far is I've given it a light sand and I've filled up the cracks that are in the wood. Done the, the good face, looks pretty good. And on this side, this is the, the back edge, so it doesn't mean too much, but it's got some, some dodgy bits. So I'm going to plane it down to that line. Quick safety tip, don't remove the guards on your woodworking equipment, it's there to protect you, your fingers, eyes, even your life. Wear your earmuffs, safety glasses, not reading glasses, wear a dust mask, wear what you're supposed to be wearing, read the books, safety books. Now I've removed the guards on a lot of my woodworking equipment and it's purely so I can get a better camera angle, don't do that, leave the guards in place. The idea is to get to the end of the project you're doing in one piece. So, be safe. Thank you. After cutting the angles, I put this board at the back of the bench with the good face facing away so it didn't get damaged. And I noticed a set of eyes. Pretty cool what you see in wood at times.
There'll be power to both ends of this bench. Each one will be a double power point with two USB outlets. And this will allow them to, to charge mobile phones, laptops, iPads, whatever, right from behind the sofa. All right, we'll just chisel that down a touch. Just to stop any breakout. Purely marking where the forcener bit's going to go in. That's my four. Seen a bunch of holes done. Right, this is purely so that when the drill breaks out the bottom of the wood, it doesn't splinter everywhere. And these are just to prevent clamps damaging the top of the wood. I'm only hand drilling it so there's not a lot of strain on it. Good. tapes just purely so that the jigsaw doesn't mark the, the final surface. That's our squares cut for the power points, and that's not the power point, but that's the size that will go over it. Alright, next bit, we need a, a groove run down here, and this is the inside of one of the legs, and that's for the power, power cord to run up for the electrician to wire that in, and then one right down the length of the top so that they can get the power to the power point at the other end so i'm just doing that groove now so i'm just going to router a little half inch deep groove and that'll bed it in nice and flat
Right, now I'm going to put all these together with a biscuit joiner, uh, which is purely a machine. It's got a round cutting blade on it. Uh, as, we, as we plunge that into your work, it does a cut like that, and the biscuit slides in like that. Now we've got a matching cut and another piece goes in. When the glue's in there, glues this into that. The other bit goes on. The glue makes this biscuit swell. Makes a really nice, good, tight joint. Strong too. So that's how we're going to hold this together. I've got corner pieces. So we've got our two braces, which will sit just like that. And this bit, bit slots up there. So we're going to have six biscuits there and two there, two there. Two, two, so always gets a bit stressful when you've got a whole bunch of uh, biscuits to, to get in at the same time uh, plus the clamps plus make sure it's all square so uh, best bet is to really make sure your, your slots are in exactly the spot they've got to be so I've marked all them now I've just cut some slots with a biscuit joiner now, Right, so I've got all the slots cut. We'll just do a, a test run. These. Yeah, I can live with that. These four bits of wood that I'm clamping to the job will be used along with my wood clamps when I do the glue up on this section. They also protect the front face of the job from the wood clamps and they'll be removed when I take the wood clamps off.
I'd like to thank my lovely wife for assisting me in this glue up. It's always nice to have a second set of hands around when you're putting things together. Which side? Oh, no, it's not. You're going to go that way. Don't, don't fight against the clamp. So let me explain to you what's going on with the clamps. Now, this bit of wood cut on an angle here because of, and I've got another one here identical, because of the angle cut out lets me clamp this clamp closing up that gap. So that directly shuts that gap. Now the angle here lets me clamp that in and the same here so we now are pulling the whole thing together this is getting pulled into the corner and this corner is getting shut this clamp he's only holding this bit of wood there and this bit of clamp is purely holding this bit of wood stopping it sliding down but once this one gets on that's trying to drag that that way well, when you put this clamp on, he's pulling it back, so it lets you really tighten the clamps up, and this, in theory, if we undo that, wouldn't go anywhere. So that's the general gist of it. I didn't invent that. 